this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can make this bouncing DVD logo in the browser using only HTML and JavaScript. So if you're interested, follow along. It's actually not that hard and you can see how it's done. Okay, so to go ahead and get started, you'll need two files, index.html and main.js. They can be in the same place and then you'll go ahead and create an HTML doc that looks like this. I have a div element with an ID of DVD and a script tag pointing to main.js. Now inside the div element, I've, got, I've created an SVG, which draws this DVD logo here. So if you'd like to follow along, you can go ahead and copy this from my GitHub. The link is going to be in the description of this video. Moving over to the main.js file, we're gonna create a new variable called DVD, and it's gonna equal the element of the logo, excuse me, the div that's holding the logo. We'll need two more variables. One is going to be an x increment, and one is going to be a y increment, and we'll start those at one. Okay, and then we just create four functions. We're gonna have an init function, which is gonna load everything up. We're gonna have one function to change the color, so we'll call that update color. We'll have another function that will handle the collision, so when the logo bounces, against the wall, it'll fire off changes to the direction that the logo is going and change the color. And then we'll have one more function called frame and that will process every frame that it steps through. So I'll go ahead and create those here. Okay, so as you can see, we start by calling the init function. So the init function, the first thing we need to do is we need to update this element to make its position absolute so that we can move the element by setting the top and left. So we'll say dvd.style.position equals absolute. All right, the other thing I wanna do is change the background of the body to be a little bit darker, something like a very dark gray. So I'll do document.body dot style dot background equals we'll try 40 40 40 go ahead and save that and now we got a dark gray background all right to change the color of the logo we will need to call the hsl function in css so first we'll go ahead and create a color at random using math dot random so we'll do math dot round math dot random times 100 that gives us a random number that we can then insert into the hsl function that will set as the fill on the svg element so we'll say dvd dot style dot fill equals hsl and here we'll insert our color that we just randomly generated, comma, 100%, comma, 50%. We'll go ahead and call this function, make sure it's working. And it is. So we're randomly generating these colors each time it's going to collide with the edge. Okay, we'll move this up top so we can run it first, set the color to some random color, and then we're gonna call frame as a interval. So we'll say set interval frame every five milliseconds. In the frame, we'll need to handle collision and update the X and Y coordinates of the logo. So we'll say dvd.style.top equals the current top, so we say offset top, plus the Y increment. So we're gonna hit, go ahead and increment whatever the top of the element pixel X, Y is, or in this case y is, we're gonna increment it by our y increment. So in this case, it would go by one. 
So let's just save it here and see what this does. Refresh. See how it slowly starts going down the screen. Okay. We'll do the same thing, but for the X increment. So we'll go ahead and copy this. And instead of top, we'll do left. And instead of top, we'll do left. And instead of Y increment, X increment. Go ahead and save that. Refresh. Now we get a diagonal. It's going at a diagonal. Okay. Now we need to handle it when it collides with the edges, that it reverses the direction. So we'll need to get a couple variables here. We'll need to get the, the window width and height to know where the edges are. So we know the left here is zero. We know the top here is zero. But we need to know where the right side and the bottom is. And then we'll need to know the width and the height of the DVD logo. So we can know that when the bottom of this logo hits the bottom of the screen, that they then call that, you know, that will be a collision and we can reverse the direction. So let's go ahead and start some variables here. Let DVD height equals DVD.offset height. Let DVD width equals DVD.offset width. Let DVD top equals DVD dot offset top. Let DVD left equals DVD offset left. And let wing height equals window dot inner height. And let wing width equals window dot inner width. Okay. Now we need to check if they ever cross each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to handle two cases here. We're going to look at did the x coordinates go too far to the left or to the right, in which case reverse the x increment, or did the y increment or the, the logo go too high or too low, in which case reverse the y increment. So we'll say if the left is less than or equal to zero, meaning it's gone off the screen to the left, or DVD left plus DVD width, so the right side of the logo is greater than or equal to window dot width, then we need to reverse X. And we'll do the same thing for the Y. If DVD top is less than or equal to zero, meaning it's gone too, too high up on the screen, or DVD top plus DVD height, the bottom of the logo there, is greater than or equal to win dot height, or win height, then it's gone below the screen. So we need to reverse the Y increment. Now how do we reverse it? Simply X increment equals the bitwise not operator of X increment plus one. And we'll do the same for the Y. Now, what does this do? Well, this special symbol right here reverses or flips all the bits in the number so that it's basically the opposite of itself. So if it's one, it reverses the, all the bits that are zeros to ones and all, this, all the ones to zeros, then it actually becomes negative two. And then we add one to bring it to negative one. Now if it's negative one and we do that same reverse, then it becomes zero and we add one, it becomes one. So what we're doing is we're flipping it between negative one or one, depending on whatever state it is. This is the same as in this, if X increment is always gonna be one or negative one, we could just write if X increment equals negative one, then X increment equals one, and then do the same thing reversely, right? But if we wanted to increment this to let's say three, 
and go from positive 3 to negative 3, then this if statement wouldn't work anymore. So that's why we do it using the not bitwise operator because it's much cleaner. And also when we do this reverse, we want to change the color because we want to change the color every time it collides. And we know it collides if it's within these if conditions. Okay, let me uncomment this part, save and see what we get. And there you go, that's it. So every time it hits something, it changes the color and reverses its direction. So it's constantly moving, but staying within the bounds of the window. And we can change the size of the window and it should still work. It should still find the borders correctly. All right, so there you have it, it's pretty simple. Didn't take very many lines of code. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content, go ahead and click the like button. And if you want to see more like this, subscribe and comment down below. Let me know what you'd like to see. Thank you.